Welcome back to Naval Action and episode 11 of A Letter to the King. If you're new to the series, A Letter to the King is my attempt to give you an update on the toing and froing of PvP on PvP Euro 1. Um, it's a day late for those who are regulars, I'm sorry about that, but there's been calamity and disaster. Uh, I live on the east coast of Australia, we've had like a six month long summer. And then this weekend we decided to get all the rain we'd been missing in two days. We had uh, 30 centimetres of rain, which is about a foot in proper money of rain fall in the best part of 36 hours. And um, now in other countries, when this happens, you'd build an ark. We don't do that in Australia because we actually want all our animals to die because all our animals are trying to kill us pretty much all the time. However, what this rain did reveal was uh, that Australia, well, Sydney at least, isn't as waterproof of, as it could be. And uh, there was tens of thousands of homes lost power, including mine. Indeed, at one point I was doing port battles with a 25 metre cable connected to my neighbour's mains. Uh, I had permission, or I would have done if uh, I'd asked him. Um, however, eventually even his uh, electricity proved not to be as waterproof as it could have been, so I had two days without power. And at the same time, I was suffering a Category 4 man flu. Uh, thanks to Facebook amens, however, I've managed to pull through, so I'll be able to get on with this week's episode. So let's remind ourselves where we were at the end of the previous week. Um, if you recall, the Americans had made a bit of a comeback, pushing down the coast of Florida and giving the pirates a shove. Meanwhile, the pirates had pretty much pushed the Brits out of Cuba. Um, the Brits had stalled against the Danes. Uh, the pirates were running amok in South America and were looking like being new neighbours for the Dutch. They were down to great corn. Um, having capped from the Yucatan down. The Dutch were giving the French a jolly good slapping, and in fact the French were down to their worst state they'd ever been. And there was a real ding-dong going on between the Swedes and the Danes. So that's where we were. Um, oh, I should mention the Spanish. The Spanish had uh, cuckolds as they are to the pirates. Um, had shared out the spoils and we're beginning to snaffle up some of the islands uh, around Cayman Brac and these three that I always forget their names. Um, so that's what the Spanish are up to. And what happened this week? Well, again, there was more damage mod changes, uh, which we'll come to shortly. But we'll begin with what appears to have been more scurrilous treachery. Um, there's stories that perhaps two clans left the Dutch who were doing so well against the French. Apparently one clan has gone pirate. I don't know why everyone goes pirate. Well, I do it so you can keep your blueprints, but um, eventually if everyone goes pirate, it will become PvE. Well, it, you won't be able to do anything. Uh, I'm rather hoping when the patch comes in, there'll be some sort of pardoning system for pirates where perhaps a nation could sponsor pirates to capture three ports on their behalf, and if they do that uh, as mercenaries, then they can get a pardon to join that nation or something like that. That would be kind of cool. Um, at cost, it would obviously cost them lots of gold. Um, that and my dream that pirates can't sell anything more than a fifth rate. Anyway, that aside, um, the French, uh, perhaps emboldened by this uh, defection, uh, or the Dutch, perhaps weakened by uh, clans buggering off to uh, hoist the black. The French really got stuck into the uh, the Dutch. And the Dutch got pushed all the way out of the Antilles. And they started eating back into some of the ports that I don't think the French had hold for the best part of a month. And I have to say the Dutch have been on the back foot all week. And um, other than snaffling a couple of ports over here... Uh, possibly trying to open up a uh, reserve front against the pirates. Uh, very little positive action for the for the Dutch, uh, which is a pity because they've been doing so well. And it all seems to have gone a bit wonky for them. Um, meanwhile, the Swedes, uh, who, if you recall, only three or four weeks ago, the Danes had sworn to 
beat them back to a single port. Well, the Swedes, uh, I know they were helped somewhat with the influx from PvP3. Um, and not only have they pushed the French back and held this line strong, uh, they've also pushed into uh, what is probably uh, considered to be Danish territory proper and, and away from their own borders around Gustavia and uh, into Christiansted. So um, the Danes are struggling and, and to make matters worse, uh, the Brits who've been just a bunch of wet sops in the previous week, they got their teeth back and pretty much pushed the Danes out of Haiti. I think the Danes hold two ports now. Um, so an extremely bad week for the Danes and for the Dutch, uh, with the honours going really predominantly to the French, uh, the Swedes, who are the little nation that could, and the Brits finally showing a bit of gumption for the first time in a, in a, in a while. Um, so that will be interesting as well. Now elsewhere, the US managed to snaffle up an extra port from the pirates, but then they did run into resistance. And I know there was a couple of real big battles up here between the Americans and the pirates. I guess the positive for the Americans is they're not losing ports at the moment. However, they didn't manage to carry on the huge push they'd made and they're being held now by the pirates. Um, the pirates who'd managed to pretty much push the Brits out of Cuba were met with the newly invigorated uh, Brits and the Brits swept along the coast from Portillo until they ha hit Escondido and that's where they met uh, some proper resistance with probably one of the better port battles of the week. Uh, at Escondido. There is a bit of funny buggery going on in the port battles at the moment. Um, if you go for a shallow port battle, uh, to quote, uh, and, and you're in your souped-up shallow water ships, to quote a great man, your shallow water ships, they float like a butterfly and they sting like a butterfly. Um, right now, uh, as of recording, shallow water ships can't penetrate the towers. Um, it's like you're firing nerf balls at a wall. It's quite funny. Uh, I was involved in, I think it was Mosquito K down here, and we went tally hoeing in with our souped up Mercuries and the likes, and all put parked a yard away from uh, the first tower. Everyone opened fire, and every single shot bounced. We tried every possible angle, couldn't get a single shot to penetrate. And in the end, we had to grape and cap, and we weren't really set up for capping, so it took ages. Thankfully, there weren't any pesky pirates there to uh, muddle the way. Um, and indeed, even in the deep water, not the capital battles, but the deep water battles with your Connies and your Ingers, um, your Ingers and Connies will only penetrate the towers off the bottom deck and then only with your perpendicular shots. So you really do now have to go in with uh, boarding set up on four or five ships. Um, but then again, you need boarding set up for PvP anyway, because naval action at the moment would best be called marine action, um, because basically it's who's got the gold marines wins the day. Um, but down here, you can't see it, the map's clipped it, but uh, at New Edinburgh, um, three pirate Ingermanlands went in there. Uh, a few Brits managed to make it at the time. They had to sail out a great corn, I think, to get there. Uh, and it was three on five, which is a rather sad and sorry tale. Uh, but the Ingies held the day because they were crewed up for capping. They capped the Brits and then they capped the towers. Took the best part of the full hour and a half, but they managed to do it. And um, sadly, a lot of the port battles, a few of the ones around here have been nice big 25ers. This was a nice big 25er. There's been some big ones around here. But clans who only a month ago could hoist 50 sails, 100 sails on a good day, are struggling to hoist two dozen at the moment. And we're in a real lull as far as numbers are concerned. And um, I'm hoping that things will pick up soon with a couple of new changes coming in. But we do need some, uh, we need a bit of uh, fire put into people's bellies to get things happening. In saying that, of course, um, the funny thing is, even though numbers are short and you don't have the huge fleets with screeners going around, 
you get yourself even into a daft battle like the one down here in New Edinburgh where it was three on five and although it's stupid three on five it was actually a really good battle and a really good win for the pirates um, so like with all PvP while you're in it you don't care what's happening in the rest of the world it doesn't bother you that there isn't twice the numbers there were um, it's still great PvP and the tweaking they've done to the um, armour and guns seems a wee bit better. I still think a couple of the ships uh, have been rudely treated, including my darling Victory. Um, however, it's it's a lot less silly. Masts are probably coming down a bit too quick. Chain shot is probably doing slightly too much damage to sails. Uh, three good volleys with my Ingham and London. I dropped someone to below 40% sails. They were right up the chuff, but nonetheless... Um, the sail wreckage was extreme. Grape shot is good, perhaps too good. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm not quite clear of my man flu. It's downgraded to a category three. Um, but uh, we do need something to get the fire back in the belly for the PvP. Um, let's hope something happens soon on that one. Meanwhile, the Spanish, uh, very quiet in Spanish waters. Um, they lost one of the islands here, Triangles or Arcanas, I can never remember the name. Uh, but at the same time, they managed to snaffle up George's town. Um, so they're not completely off the... They still have someone running around killing things, but, but they're very low on numbers. Two weeks ago, the Spanish were really resurgent. And I do wonder if everybody going pirate is just... And then you go pirate and there's no one to fight because you were fighting the side you were on before you went pirate. But anyway, let's see. Let's hope some big horrible thing comes through and makes pirate both extremely entertaining and also not the place to be. Um, Alrighty, let's move on while I slowly uh, sniffle away. Um, the Brits got busy again, and if you remember, the pirates were all the way down here to Great Corn. Well, the Brits got stuck into the pirates and um, freed a whole bunch of uh, ports along this area, uh, leaving the pirates with, I think they've got one of each now, I think they've got a deep water, shallow water, and a capital left around here. Uh, and then these, all these ports around here, these are all on the Australian timers, so they're going to be really hard to take because... Uh, during Aussie time, there's probably the lowest count on the server. It's the quietest part of the server. Uh, it's the time I play. I'll see if I can rustle us some up for a bit of biffo. Um, we only need to get 10 or 15 Brits and we can get stuck into this and hopefully meet some resistance. Um, so I think that's about what's happened this week. Let's have a look at where we might expect there to be some action. So the, the USA is back and uh, I think there'll be some battles around here and I think there'll be contested battles. The Danes are in awful trouble um, and I suspect they'll have a choice as to which flank they want to fight on. They'll either be able to fight the Swedes or fight the Brits. I think they're going to struggle to fight both. Uh, oddly enough, if they lose against both, they'll then have enough to defend uh, their remaining island, uh, but it's a bit tricky. Have the Dutch capitulated? Uh, have they got splinters in their clogs? Or will they get stuck back into the French? We'll have to see. Uh, the Brits and the Pirates have been mostly empty port capping around here, but doing a bit of biffo, a little bit of biffo. We'll have to see what happens there. Will the Spanish continue to contest in these islands? Uh, are the Brits going to push? In, in Cuba again. Uh, have the Spanish got anything to stop them? These and more we can only find out as time will tell. And uh, Let's have a look at the tally of splinters, sail and blood. So the pirates only lost a couple of ports. Uh, they gained a couple elsewhere. Uh, but overall they lost a couple. Uh, the Spanish only lost one. Uh, the Brits uh, gained eight or so ports. Uh, the Dutch got a smacking and they lost 10. That was mostly the French who took those. And you see the French here, they've risen from the bottom of the table, uh, mostly at the expense of the Dutch. Uh, the Swedes have made a gain, and the Americans have made a gain, and the Danes have lost a bunch of ports. 
So that's the tally of Splinter's Sale and Blood. I apologise again for this week's episode being a little bit late and a little bit shorter, but having no electricity for three days made it somewhat more difficult to keep a tab on everything that's going on. Um, so hopefully I will have the uh, witchcraft that allows for the sun to shine at night through the power of electricity and be able to uh, keep tabs on things a bit better this week. Um, and I'm hoping we get lots of uh, PvP and some some good naval action and um, I'm looking forward, the devs should be announcing soon what the next big patch is, so I'm looking forward to that. I hope you enjoyed this week's Letter to the King. Give us a like, give us a subscribe. I will see you on the oceans and I will infect you. <laughs>